Hello, good day, welcome back, welcome to Just Stuff. And today, I wanna show you a simple package, but I think it ups your application game, your command line application game, if you were to learn it and get in the habit of using it. If you go to go.dev and you type your CLI, and you're gonna see a few packages that help you write command line application. Um, there's Cobra and a bunch of others, and including this one that we're gonna talk about today, your fave CLI version two. Now I've used your fave CLI version one, but I figured let me show you guys and let's just up our game and use version two. So what is the benefit of using a command line package? Well, it makes your application look quite professional and we're gonna see that in just a minute. Let me go back here to my command line. And before we start coding, here's a quick favor I'd like to ask you. If you're not a subscriber, please click the subscribe button. While you're at it, click the notification bell so you can be notified when I post new videos. For those of you who already subscribed, thank you very much. Thumbs up the video. This help in other users being able to find the videos. Finally, thank you very much for leaving comments and feedback. I appreciate it. Keep it constructive so far. I've not had negative comments and I really appreciate you guys just being very positive. Even if you have something that you want me to improve on, you say it in a very nice way. So I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right, so let's go jump into the code. So here I am in a directory I'm gonna call my fave in my just stuff directory. So, you know, this is where we're doing stuff. So I'm gonna go into just stuff. I went too far back. And so your fave, not my fave, your fave. All right. So I'll start my Visual Studio Code Editor. I have a simple example program that I don't wanna waste time just coding from scratch because it's so simple. So let's just imagine that I wanted to write a simple calculator application. And so what I'm gonna do is, you know, have some arguments. So for example, here you see I have a operator argument, which is a string. And so that's gonna allow me to decide what type of operation that you want to perform. The default operation is add. So maybe I should change this from, you know, add, subtract, multiply, or divide operation to um, on two upper ends, in upper ends, okay? So that's more correct. And then I have my operands, which are integer values. So I have up one and then up two. So fairly simple. And then I do parse. And then now you can see that I just simply do a switch on operand. And if it's add, then I simply do add operation, I print out the result, subtract, subtract operation. Now, the only thing is for divide, I check that up two is not zero. If it is, then a, I log a error message letting you know that up to cannot be zero, can divide by zero. Otherwise I do it divide. So very, very simple. And so we can run this. So I can do go run and then exercise one main. And that looks like this. And then of course, if I do minus help, we can see that we have our operation and so on. And I could do minus up one, nine, for example, and minus minus up two. Um, 10, for example, and then of course minus of operation, and I could do multiply, and so give me 90. So that works very well, okay? Very simple application. But notice that how our, how our help look like, right? Um, it's very straightforward, so it's very simple. And this is good to get started using the Flax package in Go. Okay, so let's write the application now using your fave. We're in exercise two. So what I'm gonna do is rename this. I'm gonna call it old main, just for now. And then I'm gonna create a new function main here. And you simply do CLI that, and you can say like new application. And that's it. It returns a new application for you. And so let's store this in a variable. We're going to call app, for example, like that. Now, the other thing you can do is something like CLI that app and just like that. So the exact same thing, um, of course, uh, maybe more like this. So that gives you an object, which is the exact same thing that's being returned by new. It's not initialized in any way other than, you know, default initialization that code does. 
And so what can you do with this? Well, once you have an application, you can say run that application. So I can say run and notice it's a slice of string that I can pass to this. So where do we get a slice of strings? We can do os.args and that gives us a slice of strings. And notice I'm not calling all main, so you're not gonna expect to see anything from my old application. But if we go back here now and I do go run and I do exercise two, for example, main, and I run this, now notice the difference between the two. I simply had a two lines of code and look at the difference. I have a usage message, I have name, I have commands, and you know, a whole bunch of other things um, just from adding two lines of text. Um, two lines of code. Okay, so we can do a little bit better. For example, we can choose change the name. Let me say choose change the name of our application, and we can call it. Let's say we want to call this my calc, for example. Notice how our name here changed from my calc, and this still says a new CLI application. Well, we can change that also. So we can say app that usage, and then if we go back and we do run this, you should see that all of this. So let's clean up a little bit. So the screen is getting a little bit crowded. And so you can see there's a calculated name. Um, and so we may not want to re repeat the name here. We, said we can just say the best calculator for the command line. Okay, so that's not all. We can still do some other useful things. So for example, we can say at that description, you know, looking for a neat command line app calculator. Well, this is it. And so let's clean up and let's run again. And so you can see now we have name, short description, longer description. We still got usage, even though we didn't put in any flags or anything, but it's sort of giving us some hint. Basically, we're going to be able to call our application and then have global flags. And then we can also have commands and those commands can have their own options. I should say global options, the commands can have their own options, and then we can have arguments. Now, just in case you're confused about what this looks like, just think of the go command, for example. The go command is exactly like this. The go command, you know, sub commands, and those commands can take their arguments. And that's exactly what we've been running so far. We're running the go command with the sub command run, and we're given arguments right, to the run sub command. Another example of this type of um, application structure is, for example, if we do man find. And so you can see we have the similar type thing. We have the name of the application, a short description. We have synapses here, which is the usage, right? That is really the usage, the name of the command and all the options. And then we have, um, you know, our description again, once again, and if we were to jump down to the bottom of the application here, all the way down to the bottom, we'll see we have history, bugs, and see also, and so on, standards, and maybe somewhere you might see information about the author. Um, uh, don't see it here, but um, sometimes you see information about the author down at the bottom. So we can do something similar here too. We can put in a set of authors for the app who worked on the application. So we can say app that authors, and so there we go. So name, Farrell Adams, email, YouTube at straightvarsity.com. And now when we clean up and we rerun our application, for example, there you go. And you can see we have authors. And of course, that was added to what we already had before. So let's copy this and create example three. So let me show you how we can bring back some of the functionality of our previous application. So far, we're setting up author, description, all this other stuff, but we haven't been able to take any action when we run our application. So the way you do that is you say app, and then if you notice, there's this thing called action. And if you look at the type of an action, it says that our action, uh, well, it's a CLI action func. And so you can go take a look of, of what that is. But since it's a func, I have a function here. So why don't we just assign, you know, old main to action. And so I don't want to call old main, I rather want to assign it. And so we're going to see that it says cannot use old main value of type func with no return value, no parameter for this. So let's see what this is. So if we click here, we can see 
it's action func. And action func is a function that takes a context and return an error. Notice that this context is not the go context that context, but rather the context from CLI. So let's go make sure that our, our function here. So we're gonna change this though from old main, I'm gonna call it main action. And so we need to make this ctx star cli that context and that's all we need to do there. We should have the correct signature once we say that this returns an error. Now, currently, our main action doesn't return an error, it just simply return. So what we can do is when we have an error, we can just simply say, for example, when we have a divide by zero error, we can simply do fmt that error and return that. And then we need to have a return value here, so we can say a return. So that looks good. We don't have a problem. All right, so if we go back here now and we run this, we should be running exercise three. And so there we go. We can see now we're getting zero, zero, which is telling us that, oh, we are indeed running um, our main um, action. The thing is, if we try to look at our help, minus h as you can see our help look just like before we don't see the go um, lang flag package um, flags that we configure so even though it look like it's parsing this as the default and it is giving us that in order to be able to run this plus command because that's what we get here we said that the plus command was run when we didn't pass anything so that still seems to be happening behind the scenes, but somehow it's being gobbled up or something and we're not seeing any flags. So that is, not, that is not the way in which you specify flags. So let's do that in exercise four. So the way you configure flags for um, apt is you say something like app.flags and we do equal. And then if we do flags, we can see as well this look like it takes a slice of flags. Okay, so that's great. And so the difference here though, is that flag is an interface. And so we need to then create values that implement this interface. It just so happened that I know that what it, some of the um, implementations that are available is CLI that let's say string flag is a um, struct which implements the flag interface. And but the way it is implemented is that it's implemented on a pointer of this um, value. So on this type. So that's why we need the ampersand. And so if you notice, if I hover over this, you have name, you have usage, alias, all these other things, which we'll talk about and values. So if you compare this to our flags before below here, we have name of the flag, we have value and then we have usage. So it seems to me that what we can do then is simply take our flags from here, move them up into here and then modify them. Well, no, we should have um, three properly configured flag. Of course, we don't need this one. So let's take this out, save again. And this looked like it was reformatted just now. So I think it's Okay, now since our default value, since this is an int, I will know that we actually have to specify a default value. So let's try that without doing that. So let's save it again. And then now we don't need this. And so let's um, run our application again. And so you can see, it looks like it's running um, this time, except we haven't verified that we can display our new set of arguments and there they are. These are our global argument. And that makes sense that these are global arguments because we attach them to the application. Later on, we're gonna see how you create commands and then you can attach arguments or options rather. So these are global options. We can attach options to our to specific commands. All right, so let's see if this still works. And notice our default value here is zero and we still have default uh, as add okay so let's see yes it says here default add so let's see minus op1 minus minus op1 
and we can say nine for example and notice that still works so that still seems to work so that's good uh, minus minus op2 and 10 and minus operon operation and let's do multiply for example and that works well what about divide well we have divide that still seem to work but if we divide by zero well it exit quietly so what is happening here well what is happening is that now when we run our command we get an error but we just simply exit our program so what we should do is we should say error colon equals to this there we go and then print out the error so now if we go back clean up and rerun we should see our error and that's great and then if there's no error our program just run nicely so let's clean that up all right so hopefully we're moving fast enough but not too fast that you can't keep up all right so let's go to exercise five now so okay now we want to see how we can add command and to add command is also fairly simple so what i'll do is i'll just come here and say application that commands and then you just saw something there that says that oh, this is a slice of pointer to commands. So let's do this and let's say commands. And so it's a slice. And so there we go. And so one of the first command I want to do is add command. So let me do add command. And this is going to be for our add operation. Okay. Well, actually, I want to do it like this. So what is this? Well, this is just simply a function that returns a command. Now, a command is just this thing. It's this thing that says, what's the name of the command, alias, and all this stuff. And I will talk about alias in a bit. Um, as you can see, a bunch of other things, right? Um, and of course, action there. So let's write a function called add command. And what it does is it returns a pointer to a CLI that commands. And so, um, yep, there we go. And so what we want to do is return CLI, address of CLI, that command, and it's going to be something like this. Now, the easiest thing to do is probably just add a command that, well, have a command, return a command that is simply called add uh, with a name. And so let's see what this does. And so that's all we did. So let's review. All I did was create basically this value and add it to this slice. That's all this function is doing. And so let's run exercise five now. Actually, I want to run five. So let's run five, clean up, run five. And as you can see, we have this command here called add, right? And so we always had help that was given to us, given to us but now we have add. All right, so add doesn't do anything. Of course, we can still call add, right? We can say, like for example, add. This is going to be like a go run. And notice when we call add, this is the add command and it has, you know, its own usage and so on, but we haven't specified anything. So notice that is one of the reason why, um, you know, nothing can be done because we have no action. And of course we can specify additional arguments. So, but now we're specifically invoking the add command. So one of the things we can do is we can say alias and we can say an alias for this command is to just be, we can invoke it by just saying a. So that's an alias for the same add command. And you can notice it's a slice. So you can have multiple aliases. Um, Alias might most time gonna be a shorthand or something like that. I think it'd be very confusing to do something like multiple different um, aliases that are not sort of related. So um, definitely keep that in mind. So we know what action is. Action is simply a function that is a context that CLI that context and returns an error. So we can take that out. And so let's save this. And so if I rerun this. Okay, well, I haven't done anything, but you can see here it's executing my um, command now because I have an action. So let's go back, clean up, run that again. So this is a little bit cleaner. And there you go, right? But let's now check out our help. And we can see that for add, we have an alias just like help has this alias. Now that we know how to add commands, 
I would say let's continue and turn this so we're in exercise six so one of the things that we have here is our global actions and um, we need to be able to access those options in add operation and so let's make sure that oh, we can do that there so let's take this and i would say let's move it up into here because that's where we really want it and we can get rid of this add here because we don't really need this um, actually for our main operation comment out our main operation here let's see does this work remember we have flags that are tied to tied to our global variables and so our action can certainly see those variables so we should be able to still um you know be able to get the same results so let's do that and this is exercise six and so nothing should really change in terms of our alias. What we should be able to do now is if we don't pass anything, we shouldn't see anything because our main action is not doing anything. Our application action rather is not doing anything. But our command A, we should see this. And since we can't, well, here's the thing. Can we pass um, an, argue, an option to A? Well, A doesn't take any option because we didn't define any for A, but our global option still exists. So we can say app one is six, for example, and the command we want to run is A. And you can see we still can access that in our command. So that is one way we can do it. And of course, we can still say, you know, app two is 10, for example, and we can still run uh, so six. 10 and so there we go all right so let's rerun that and there we go now if we were to pass our option to a itself right that's a problem that is because our um, command a does not have this option all right so that wouldn't work all right so we can specify flags for actions too and that is also fairly easy it's exactly like we had before we can say flags and we can do the exact same thing and that would be for example if we wanted some extra flags for this particular command and so that would be the equivalent of how go has all these sub command but each one of them have their own flags so for example you can say Go and I think help run, for example, so you can see the app, um, options for the run command, right? So it has its own flags. And then if you do go build, some of the options apply for build, but notice all oh, the help is much different. And of course it has many more options, right? So, or flags, they call it here. So, okay, so this is exercise six. And so let's run this again, go run six main. And so if we do that, we don't have anything defined for application action, but notice how we have um, our global options. We have A, and then if we type A minus H, we should see we have this argument. And so there you go, that's an example. This seems a little bit cumbersome to have the user have to specify, um, you know, something like minus minus up one. 10 minus minus up to six and then see which command they, they want to call that seemed cumbersome to me it seemed like a known a more natural usage would be something like add you know 10 and 6 right that seems like what we really want and then you can call this from a program and specify the argument what operation you want and the operands so in order to do that what we should do then is get rid of flags because we don't need flags here and we should ask ourselves how many arguments are passed to this action and for that that is very easy and so if we call this function it will give us an idea of how many arguments we have for this command so let's go back here and let's rerun and we can see we have two arguments and if we put minus three for example we should see that we have three arguments so that's good so this tells us that though we can access those arguments for this command 
And so that's going to make it easier for us to be able to do our addition and subtraction instead of using flags. We don't want to use flags. Those are boring. So, okay, so let's move on to exercise seven. So now that we know we don't want to use flags, we can sort of get rid of this so we don't leave too many things just hanging around. Okay, so how do we deal with, we know that which command we're called with, that's specified. So we don't have, no longer need the switch statement. But within here, we still need to loop over our arguments. So we know that we can get the number of arguments. We should store that in n, for example, for number of arguments. So that's that. And so we want to save the result somewhere. So I would say instead of pulling out each and every one, so what we can do is we can say ctx that ctx that args. Right. And what this does is returns a CLI argument that we can interrogate. So for example, if you run this thing that we can ask for the first argument as a string, or we could get any argument zero base from zero being the first and so on. And it's a string. The disadvantage is not type because it doesn't know what type we expect in those arguments, not the option argument. Remember options were typed, but this is argument, right? This is the example here. It doesn't know if this is a string or int or float or whatever. So the, that's the only drawback with doing it this way. But at least it allows us to make the usage very simple, in my opinion, by doing this instead of specifying options to specify our operand, okay? And so the way we can do is simply loop over each of our options and just simply add it. I know this is just one way of doing it. It's not the best way. It's not gonna, but it's going to work, okay? <laughs> Let's just see. All right, so essentially what I'm doing is get the first, if there's there, there aren't any options, I return an error. The first one I send it to result because if there's nothing else, then that is it. Um, we don't have anything else to add. If there's more than one, we loop over them, we parse them, we add them to um, result. If it's an error, it's going to be zero. So you can see that here, um, return zero. Um, I don't know if it says that here, but that's what happens. It returns zero, makes sense if there's an error. And, other, and we print out, for each one we print it out, and then at the end we do equal. So let's run this again and see. So which example is this? Oh example seven so let's do example seven let's clean up let's run this and as you can see 10 plus 10 30. ah so that's a problem it is doing only the first one so i know exactly what that is it means that our, we're not getting a again so we need to get a each time in the loop and so we don't have to recreate a and we can say n instead because remember um, I instead, sorry, not N, but rather I. I is going to start from one once it gets into this loop. So there we go. Let's clean up. Let's rerun. And so we have 10 plus 6 plus minus 3 is equal to 13. And that is correct. Our application, our addition is working with multiple values. And it's much more sensible, in my opinion, than all the minus minus op. If we use the flags, how will we get to specify like 10 values, right? This is sort of easier. So now that we have addition working, it's super easy to do the others. So let's do the others really quickly and wrap up. And so we go back up here and we add it to our list, div command. And there we go. We run our help and then we're gonna do multiply, clean up, run this with add, Clean up. Oh, I know. I don't need to clean up. Um, these are simple outputs. Um, subtract and multiply and divide. Divide. And um, if we were to, let's see, and that's because we're doing integer division, right? So that's why um, we're getting those values. Um, so let's do you know, like 100 divided by six divided by minus three until uh, so we get minus five. All right, but if one of these value was zero, then we should get an error message. Now, um, we start printing out things before we encounter an error. So that doesn't make our output look too clean, but you know, it's an error. So, you know, big deal that it's sort of messy. 
but we can do things to fix that up. We can accumulate our what we want to print out in a string buffer and then print out the string buffer to end. So that's another way of doing things. So we've done that and we have all of our operations that we would like, okay? With subcommands for each operation. So we've gone from having to specify like, you know, arguments with dash dash and so on. We don't have any global options, so we don't have any facts. We don't have any specific options that need to be added to any of our subcommands, so those commands don't have opt flags either, but we could, we see the capability is there. Here's the thing, when we run our command or application without specifying any subcommand though, nothing happens, right? And this is a, if we run go by itself, notice we get help. So that's one of the things that we can do is we can interrogate the system probably for not a package for the help text and print that out. Let's see, ctx that, um, command oh no not that guy ctx that app that command and then let's do the help command and and so run it with this context and let's see if it runs so there we go all right so that's one way in which you can get um your help to display if the user doesn't specify any one of your commands all right so that's it. Um, hopefully you like this. Um, hopefully you're gonna use it and definitely check out the full documentation. One last thing, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post videos. Hit a thumbs up on this video so that other people can see the video. I think it's some good information there. Hopefully you agree. If you don't agree, let me know why, how I can make it better and so on. In comments, please do leave comments and thanks for the constructive comments that I've been getting so far. And for those of you who have supported me through PayPal, thank you very much. Um, anyone who supports me through PayPal, here's my PayPal information. Um, just leave a comment in the PayPal letting me know how you want me to this if you want me to display a thank your name and say thank you on the end of the, at the end of the video and how you want that displayed if you come through my patreon page well you can depend on which level you come in at then your name would be added automatically to the thank you unless you say otherwise but if you send me paypal or bitcoin well bitcoin i can't i wouldn't know who you are so i wouldn't be able to say thank you but definitely if you send me paypal just send a note letting me know um how I should display your name saying thanks on the, at the end of the video if you want me to display your name. All right, take care. See you. Have a great rest of the day. Stay safe. Bye.